Hey guys, Camille Lambert, field agronomist for Kentucky, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois. I'm with our new agronomist, Shane Carver. He represents the rest of the South. Um, and over the last week or so, we've started getting a lot of calls on fertility and um, soil sampling, all kinds of stuff. And it's hard to believe we're thinking about 2021, but here we are. And so we thought we would take the time to give you guys a couple tips and tricks going into the new crop year. So yep. Shane, why should we be soil sampling? Yeah, so so we should be soil sampling every uh, every year in some cases, but at least every two to four years. Uh, we really want to take these measurements uh, to to really really see where we stand in, in regard to pH, uh, nutrient levels, mainly P, K, calcium, magnesium, uh, and then and then really to tell us what fertilizers we need to be using uh, going into the next or the next two growing seasons. So. So uh, at, at, to evaluate these, uh, we typically use a, a basic soil analysis. So to really look at the, the pH uh, mm -hmm. and your basics uh, or your macronutrients. Uh, and then once we have those in check and they're at adequate levels, uh, then we can take, take a deeper dive and go into a, a full uh, soil analysis and really get into our micros, uh, more into our base saturation, uh, and, and really, really start to iron out uh, some of the issues we may have been seeing in the field this past season. Yeah, and that's where I like to cover the four R's, right? The right time, the right place, the right rate, and the right source, which is that's things right. that you just talked about. Um, but when we talk about soil sampling, it's really important to do the same thing every time. Right. So really we should ideally soil sample right before the crop goes out right in the spring so we know what nutrients are available but it's just not always logistical you know um, we got to be planting and spraying and doing field cultivation and there's just all th kinds of things happening and then we've got a lot of rain in the spring so the fall is typically when a lot of people like to soil sample but it's important to know that some of your nutrients especially your potassium is not going to be super realistic um, on paper because some of those nutrients are tied up in the corn stalk that you see behind us and they're going to slowly start to release as they break down so it's important to make sure you do it at the same time but then in in the same spot so if if we're out here in our corn stubble we want to make sure we're doing some right by the row some right in between the row and we get a good representation um, and also we're when we want to make sure that we stay out of those weird spots we don't want to yep. soil sample by a fence row or by a rock road that contains a lot of limestone um, and make sure you stay out of low areas so that is right. one thing. And then the next thing is we got to make sure we have all the tools. So what do you got there? Yeah. So here I have a soil probe. Uh, so when we're, when we're collecting these samples, uh, we really want to make sure we're being consistent, uh, again, uh, with our depth. So our sampling depth is very important, as you can see here. Uh, I always paint uh, marks on my on my probe. So we I, I have it painted here. So the top of the, my painted mark will be at six inches. Uh, bottom will be closer to four inches. So in a co conventional tillage scenario, uh, I like to see a, a six inch soil sample. Uh, if we're in a long term, five years or more in a no-till environment, uh, we can get away with doing uh, a four inch sample uh, so with that we're, we're gonna go back to kind of our, our data points and where we're taking it at and that way we can go back every year so uh, whatever vehicle you soil sample out of uh, when you pull up to a, to a spot whether it be in a zone or a grid within a zone uh, or just a, a, a larger uh, a larger grid say less than 10 acres mm -hmm. uh, we want to take a GPS coordinate uh, and we want to get out and take six to twelve cores uh, around our vehicle so that way when we pull up to the next next growing season or the next time we sample uh, we can be very consistent year to year uh, so we want to again take six to twelve cores uh, around around whatever vehicle we're using that way it stays consistent uh, and then th and then we'll put those into our soil test uh, analysis bags uh, and we'll send that off so yeah. it's really really important to to be consistent on, on your labeling uh, and also be able to to go back and know where you took that from uh, to be able to, when you get results back, you know, relate it back to a location, a specific location in the field. Yeah, so you got to make sure you keep them labeled right and don't get them mixed up because your results are only going to be as good as the sample that you took. That's right. And so when you get your, your results back, you may be confused with what to do to it. And that's where a nutrient management plan comes into play. We've got to make a plan because you spent the time to go out and do your sampling. And now we need to come up with a plan on how we're going to fertilize. And that is where Farm Server can come in. It's a free tool that Bex has. You can actually pull your yield data right off the combine, plug it into Farm Server. It's already got your soil types put in there. And we can come up with management zones based on several different factors and then you can make a plan 
uh, put it on a, a, a data stick and go stick it in and yep. have a variable rate application made right off a of farm server. So That's right. the goal overall is to make you guys money. And if we can get a better return on investment uh, by soil sampling, making sure we're putting the right amount of nutrients in the right spots, we can help you guys make more money and succeed. Yep. And that, that I want to kind of touch on as well. So when we go to send these samples off, uh, we need to make sure that we're being realistic in, in what we're and what we're tagging on that soil soil sample. So uh, whenever you fill your your soil analysis paper out, you know you need to make sure that you're putting realistic goals in. So if a, a cornfield's been averaging over the last five corn cropping seasons about 175 bushels you know we don't really want to go in and put uh, 250 that's probably not a realistic goal uh, if the fertility is is the restricting factor um, so uh, we want to make sure that we're being consistent on that end because if not your results or the recommendations on the soil analysis results are going to indicate you need to fertilize put more fertilizer out and if you can't get that return off of that crop then it, then it's not uh, it's not not good to do yeah so you know we talked a little bit about soil sampling another type of sample that you should do when you're thinking about fall fertility or even spring fertility is if you're using manure it doesn't matter what kind of manure it is but you need to make sure you get it analyzed because not all manure is created equal it could be the same and you know the same person giving you the manure but the analysis is going to change from year to year yep. so you want to make sure you get that analysis especially if you're going to factor in some of those nutrients as part of of your management you got to make right. sure that you know what that analysis is so if you like, if you guys like what y'all saw today, uh, be sure to, to stay tuned. We'll have some more uh, soil fertility information coming out soon. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to sign up for my text alerts. Uh, it'll be Carver, C-A-R-V-E-R. Uh, text that to 733-337.